Tanaka at all. Um, actually, James, I think, sort of set the standard and he's not even speaking. So thanks, mate. A lot of pressure. Um, a lot of testosterone in the room and I'm going to talk to you this evening about uh, love or Arawa. It sort of feels a bit uncomfortable to talk about a subject like that with this much testosterone. But um, last year, as you heard, uh, a research firm described the Crusaders as the best sporting franchise in Australasia in the past 25 years. So they analysed 74,426 matches, 222 teams, uh, 14 sports, 25 years, and there was a bigger gap between number one and two than there was between number two and five. There was only one rugby club in the top uh, 10 teams in their research, and there was, only, there was no other team from New Zealand in the top 25. So I started as CEO at the Crusaders at Rugby Park earlier this year, and man, were we on a roll. We were unstoppable. Fast forward 15th of March. Fuck. Um, we were stuck in Dunedin, or I was stuck in Dunedin. The team was there. We were struggling a bit, desperate to get home to the loved ones. Climbed off a plane, and the first question, uh, tell us about your name. And um, it, it was a bit challenging, both uh, you know, the event and then sort of afterwards. So messages, social media, phone calls, people in the street, people at games, at matches coming up, giving me their opinion. Um, and you got heaps of threats, lots of opinions, and in short, there were sort of two parts to the messaging. You're either a gutless bastard because you're uh, pandering to the do-gooders, or you're a gutless bastard because really leadership's about making a change, being bold and decisive and getting on and getting it done. So I end up in a pretty bad place a few months of that. It, was, it does take its toll. Um, and I remember today, I, I used to work in financial services, and I remember today going into a branch one day and there was a personal banker talking to their branch manager about a customer interaction that had occurred. And uh, they were talking about sales targets and technique and, and you know, widgets sold and all this sort of thing. And um, the regional manager popped in and said, if that was your mum or your dad or somebody you loved or cared about, would you have had a different conversation? And... Um, the banker said, yeah, oh shit, yes, I would have, um, I would have done this, I would have done that, I wouldn't have sold this, I would have done this thing, I would have done that thing. I would have had a much different conversation. The irony is they'd have sold more products so the bank would have been more successful um, and the customer would, be, would have been in a far better place, all through having this sort of love mindset. So I took that on board when I was in my dark place. I sort of remembered this weird conversation and I thought, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start thinking about people who want to give me their opinions um, I'm going to start thinking about them as mum, dad, brother, sister, my, my aunties or uncles, my wife, my kids, somebody I love or care about, and I'm going to say to them, how would I alter my, you know, what am I, how am I going to behave differently when I have those conversations? So over the past few months, I have had quite a few. Uh, I've spoken to people the length and breadth of New Zealand, and they've given me their opinions. I've spoken with people in Australia, South Africa, the Pacific, Dubai, uh, other places in the Middle East, Europe, and they've all given me their opinions. I've had these sort of quite heartfelt, passionate, loving conversations uh, with people who don't want us to change our name, and I've had very, very heartfelt, similar, passionate conversations with people who do want us to change our name. But you know what? The thing about it is I've made a whole heap of friends, and I don't think there's too many enemies amongst the whole lot of them. It's helped me build a whole lot of relationships, whatever people's opinions. But back to Rugby Park, where I, where I work, and um, one of the privileges I get to in this job, or I've had in this job this year, is I've seen a couple of rituals. So both end of career rituals and for those players that have passed a major milestone, 150 games or something of that nature. And, um, and what tends to happen is in the dressing shed or in some environment, the mentee of the person receiving the award or, or the acknowledgement tends to speak about that person and tell them how much they've appreciated them and and that sort of thing, and then the, the person who's passed the milestone or who's finishing their career uh, then responds. And I, I've built a word cloud in my head of uh, what words, you know those word clouds that you see and there's a big word in the middle and all the others around the outside of, of what words are used. And these are men that bash into each other at you know 25 kilometres an hour and 110 kgs plus, they're pretty brutal men. Um, and I would have thought before thinking about that the central words would have been excellence or respect or standards or encouragement or support or training or skills. But actually the word was love. I mean, it's, it's pretty, it sort of, it makes you sort of grab sometimes, but it, it wasn't any of those words. It was 
I love playing with you guys. I love playing for this club. I love this club. I love representing my community more than anything else in the world. I love representing the fans. I love connecting and communicating with fans. I love you, my brothers, that I'm playing this game with. And I love my family who support me to play this game. So not excellence, not respect, not standards, not effort, not training, but love. Love is the one that sits in the middle. Rugby Park. Pretty cool place to be. So no matter how difficult it gets, when you're surrounded by that much Ottawa, you, you just, you, you know, you just can't wait to get out of bed in the morning. Thanks for listening. Kia ora, Ottawa Nui.